everyone. Welcome to Time Tunnel, where we find out what was making news in the past. I'm Gigi Stone in New York. Now, today we travel back to this day in 1978. Here's Harry Reasoner. This is the ABC Evening News with Harry Reasoner and Barbara Walters, who's in California. Also, Frank Reynolds and Howard K. Smith in Washington. Good news arrived at the White House. Unemployment is down to its lowest point in three years. I'm Ann Compton. A government anti-smoking drive is launched. Some critics say it's not enough. Others say it goes too far. I'm Charles Gibson. The Israeli and Egyptian defense chiefs get together to resume the Mideast peace talks. I'm Jerry King. Gerald Ford says he'll probably run again if Jimmy Carter does a bad job as president. I'm Barbara Walters. Good evening. The nation's unemployment rate fell sharply last month, ending the year 1977 at 6.4%. That news from the Labor Department today was received most happily at the White House, where Ann Compton reports. Unemployment dropped to its lowest point since the recession three years ago. Last year at this time, unemployment was a discouraging 7.8%. The government created thousands of jobs at a cost of $11 billion that finally brought some improvement at the end of 1977. White males always fare best. Their below average rate of unemployment went down to 4.1%. Black male workers benefited too, although at 9.1%, blacks are still suffering more than whites. It is even worse for black teenagers, whose jobless rate actually went up from one year ago. <laughs> President Carter and Economic Council Chairman Charles Schultz were not shy about taking credit for beating their own year-end goal. I think that the uh, slow impact of the programs we put into effect was disappointing for a while, but now they're beginning to show up. President Carter acknowledged he still wants to push through a tax cut in 1978. He also got word today that the economic growth across the country slowed in the final weeks of 1977. So there is still discouraging news to balance the good. Ann Compton, ABC News, the White House. This is Frank Reynolds. Fourteen years ago today, the Surgeon General issued the first report on cigarette smoking and health. Since then, about 30 million Americans have kicked the habit. But Despite all the evidence linking cigarette smoking to disease and death, there are still 54 million Americans puffing away, including 6 million teenagers. Today, the federal government launched a new drive to help smokers stop and persuade non-smokers not to start. The man who announced the new program believes it can be done. We have a series of reports on the smoking situation. First, here is Charles Gibson in Washington. He once smoked three packs a day. Now HEW Secretary Joseph Califano is leading the largest government effort yet to get people to stop smoking as he did. I do bring the frightening knowledge that cigarette smoking is public health enemy number one in the United States of America. People who smoke are committing slow motion suicide. It cannot be ignored. Smoking ruins health smoking kills. The Califano campaign against smoking will contain a study on the effectiveness of raising the excise tax on cigarettes. It's been eight cents a pack since 1951. Urging the Civil Aeronautics Board to ban smoking on commercial aircraft. A warning to users of contraceptive pills that they run increased risks if they smoke. A study on the possibility of strengthening the warning on cigarette packages and a stepped-up educational campaign to aim anti-smoking messages primarily at teenagers, an age group where smoking has increased. Califano wants to use network television time for his anti-smoking spots. Cigarette industry advertising has been banned from TV since 1971. The campaign will be run by a new Office of Smoking and Health which will spend six million dollars on educational efforts next year. As one critic said, that's like sending a mosquito out to fight jets, since the cigarette industry spent 83 times that much on advertising last year, and past educational efforts have met with mixed success. Americans have already been bombarded with anti-smoking commercials. Don't save your breath. Don't smoke cigarettes. Yet the number of people who do smoke in this country has gone up a bit since 1964 and a record number of cigarettes was sold last year. Critics charge Califano did not go far enough, that he should have proposed programs to help people quit, that cigarettes should be regulated like a drug. Those arguments were rejected, leaving the great paradox. One government branch, HEW, runs an anti-smoking campaign, another branch, agriculture, 
gives hundreds of millions of dollars in loans to tobacco farmers each year. Charles Gibson, ABC News, Washington. Oh,